Hello and welcome to this module on model implementation. This is a really big module. Um, we're going to be going through the process of connecting, of persisting objects um, in your play applications. And last week we talked a little bit about design, so you got the, the kind of vibe of creating tables corresponding to objects in your domain. This week we're going to go through the implementation process. This is a pretty hairy module. Um, going to take a while for you to to kind of grok this material. So um, hopefully you'll you'll get started quickly on it. Just to review, you know, we're finishing off the model view controller paradigm, um, and we're using MySQL as the backend database um, to kind of finish off our our stack. The learning objectives for this module are to learn how to install MySQL on your computer. Um, and then in addition to installing MySQL, you need to install a client program that enables you to kind of display the contents of um, MySQL. And um, the client that you want to install is going to depend upon the platform that you're using. There's basically different clients for um, Windows, Mac, and uh, Linux, and I, I've given you links. To, there's a lot of clients out there, and I don't really care which one you use. Um, I'm going to give you recommendations or you know reasonable examples for each each platform you can adopt if you want. We're also going to be using the eBean Object Relational Manager, which is the mechanism that we can use to simplify the um, mapping of Java objects to um, rows in the underlying table and um, it makes certain things easier it does require a lot learning a lot of new kind of techniques and, and syntax and so forth um, so it's not a it's not a simple thing to do um, but you'll get started on it on it this week and then um, in addition to just kind of understanding the EB, EBN ORM there's the kind of mechanics of connecting a play application to an underlying MySQL database and, and how that all works. Um, and finally, um, uh, once you've got your play application working locally and, wor and kind of um, reading data and writing data uh, back and forth between the MySQL server that runs on your own laptop, then there's a whole process for taking your play application and deploying it to the cloud such that it can now read and write data from a MySQL um, database running in the cloud. And um, so we'll talk about how to do that. Um, we'll use CloudBees again. And, and the reason why I'm selecting MySQL um, for use locally is because that's what my that's the database that CloudBees supports. So if you just learn MySQL and use that locally, then um, you know the transition to the cloud is, is a lot easier. Um, so just to kind of briefly review the technologies, um, MySQL, they say it's the world's most popular open source database. I think that's probably pretty close to true. Um, it's certainly very, very popular um, and, a, and a perfectly reasonable choice. And it's something that, you know, regardless of what database you ultimately use, use um, it's never bad to have some experience with, with MySQL. You can call it MySQL as well. It's pronounced either way. And then you'll need a client um, system. You could use just the command line, and that's you know that's okay. But it's you know it's so much easier to use a client. So I think you should um, should download one of these clients. And um, and uh, for the Mac, there's this one called SQL Pro. For Windows, there's this Heidi SQL. Um, and then there's a Java one, which will basically run on anything Mac, you know, Windows or or Linux, called Squirrel SQL. Um, so you can you know pick whichever one you want. You can you know try a couple or something. You know it doesn't really matter. We're going to be using the eBean ORM, the um, the kind of 800 pound gorilla in the Java ORM space is called Hibernate, and um, eBean has a little bit. It's a little bit simpler to use than Hibernate. Um, so we're going to use that. I'm also using it because most of the play examples that you'll see use eBean. So I want to try to you know um, use the technology for which it's easiest to see um, sample code um, but hibernate is the one that you'll you'll kind of see more often fortunately um, 
uh, a lot of the things that eBean does is, is almost done identically in Hibernate. So there's, um, particularly when you're annotating entities and so forth, that's pretty much exactly the same. Um, so just as an example, what you're going to be doing with your models is you're going to be adding annotations like that at entity annotation up here. Um, you'll be extending a model superclass, which is going to provide like a save uh, method for um, persisting your, your classes. You're going to have to add a serial version UID, and then you're going to add a, um, an ID, a primary key, and annotate that with that ID. And then um, when we have relationships, in this case, um, you know, we have a many-to-one relationship, many contacts maps to one user info, um, and we'll provide that annotation as well. And that's, in fact, a new field that we didn't have when we were just using in-memory storage. We basically, the relationship was actually embedded within the hash table, um, but now we're going to make that explicit. And then when we want to get stuff out of the database, we're not going to use regular SQL statements. Instead, we're going to use this query language, which is defined by eBean, and it kind of looks like this. We're going to define a special find method inside each of our entities, and so we can retrieve a user info um, instance that um, uh, satisfies the criteria that where the email field um, of that entity is equal to the email string that's passed in and we're going to find um, you know there should only be one version of that in the table and if we don't find it at all we'll return null. Okay so that's an, kind of a simple example and this, e this query language can get a little complicated. I show you examples of it um, and um, and you'll just have to kind of um, you know fool around. I think you can get through this week, particularly after you've seen my example solution. You'll be should be able to kind of plod through and um, get things working. The, the query language can get quite complicated, just like SQL statements. You know, SQL queries can get quite complicated with inner and outer joins and all that kind of stuff. Um, fortunately, for right now, we're not going to get into super complicated queries. Um, but you know it's all available to you. And then of course we also have to tell Play how to communicate with this underlying uh, MySQL database and so there's various kinds of configuration stuff you have to set up. Um, and then we also have to um, figure out how to do this deployment to the cloud and use the you know the cloud-based uh, databases and so there's a whole kind of section that's involved with that. So quite a bit of stuff this week. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna release this module early just because there's so much stuff that you're gonna want to do and and I beg of you to not wait until the last moment to start this. Um, you know I don't know how much other I know you've probably got a lot of other stuff to do, but I really want you to get started early because if you can spend five or six days working on this you know, an hour a day, whatever. Um, it will be hard, but it will sink in and you'll, you'll get through it. If you wait until the last day and just try to rush it with some 12 hour long, you know, session, it's, it's going to be misery, you know, and you may just have an epic fail. Okay. So, so, um, please take my advice, you know, start on this early. Don't wait until the last minute. Um, that was my last hint. So let me go through the other ones. You know, you want to, um, definitely look at all the resources. One of the issues is that the Play for Java book is is um, got some advice that I just emphatically disagree with. So I'm going to ask you to ignore some of the things that they tell you to do. I don't. I hate that, but you know, it's I just can't avoid it. Um, I do have a I do have a play example in MySQL package that I have on the web that you're going to kind of work through and hopefully that will get you started with the kind of the mechanics of doing this stuff. Um, got a couple, just two wads, two practice wads, um, but you know one of them takes an hour to do at the Rx rate. That's the longest wad by far of the semester, um, but I don't, I don't have a simpler version to, to give you at this point. Um, so that's, that's the situation. Um, what I want to do now is is kind of go to the web and, and show you some stuff. Here's here's the the um, the module and these resources. I want you to click through all of these links. Well, maybe not the clients that you don't care, but all of these really early on. You should click through them and and read through them a little bit. Get familiar with them, even if you don't understand everything. 
Um, you'll know that the resources are there and you can come back to them later. I want to highlight this mod model implementation guidelines. These are kind of the, my best practices um, that um, I think will be helpful to you. Read them through. They won't all make total sense the first time you look at them, but keep coming back to them and, um, and they'll make more sense over time. This is the, um, the play example MySQL system, which is the, there's two assignments. There's this first assignment for the, the module is to simply work through, uh, you know, the, these instructions to get this already, you know, implemented play application running both locally with MySQL, and it explains to you how to, you know, install MySQL, start it up, set the root password, you know, set up your environment variables, create a root password for MySQL. Um, I'm sorry, to log in to MySQL and, um, you know, the, the changes you need to make to build that. Actually, that's build.sbt um, for the, the, uh, the new version. And, um, and then once you've finished getting it locally done, and the, the application itself is super simple. Every time you refresh the page, it just increments a counter. So the, the database part of it is trivial. But once you get it done running, once you get it finished running locally, then you'll want to deploy it um, to the cloud and I go through all of those instructions. So the very first thing that you're going to want to do for this module after you've read all the resources and gotten comfortable is just go through this readme, follow the instructions and try to get you know this application running both locally and in the cloud. Okay, That's the first thing. The second thing that you're going to want to do for this um, module is the, the actual practice squad, which involves taking your digits application and implementing um, uh, persistency using MySQL. Okay, and I'll just kind of step through. You know, I want to. You know, I do have the the actual um, you know wide walkthrough that that goes through all this in detail. But just to get you going, I want to show you some of the the code for this up front so you get a sense for it. It turns out that, that we're not going to modify much about the controllers. There's a little bit with this, this sentinel value that we have to change, but really because of the fact that in our um, models class we have this database um, class as well as the entity class that you know almost all of our persistency related stuff is going to be um, is going to be implemented in this package which is which is nice. For our entities, we'll be annotating okay, the actual class. We'll be extending model. We have to provide a serial version UID. We have to annotate our primary key field with this at ID. And then we have to annotate um, the field that we're going to use to express our um, relationships. And our relationships are going to be bidirectional. So if we went to the user info class, we'd see that there was a, um, a list object that held a set of contact instances in it. Okay, and, and so that's how we implement bidirectionality. So if a contact points to a user info, then a user info is going to point back to a contact. Um, and then we also have, we implement this special method called find, um, which has this very kind of canonical structure. It's very easy. You basically just replace these three, you know, uh, strings in this definition with the actual entity that you're defining, and you've got your find method for that, and that enables you to do queries. So setting up the the um, the entities is not so bad. Where it gets a little more complicated is when you want to interact with the the database, and so you can see um, here when we want to get the user info. Uh, object associated with um, that particular user, we're going to invoke this eBean object relational manager query language um, in order to retrieve that user info. And if we couldn't find it, it would happen to not be in there, we'll throw a runtime exception. Otherwise, we're going to set the two relationships, the, the two bidirectional links, and then we call a save method on our two objects, um, and, and we're done. In the case of a new um, contact, we basically just have to, um, or if we're updating an existing contact, then the first thing we have to do is use the find method associated with that entity to find that object, passing it the, the primary key value. 
and then we just update the fields in that object with the um, new data from our form. And when we're all done, we just save that entity out and everything's all good. Okay? And then, you know, basically, depending upon what the methods are that we need in our, this, you know, kind of, um, you know, bridge class to our, our, our repository, you know, we figure out what the right kinds of, um, of uh, you know, database calls we need in order to implement the functionality. So if we want to say is user, you know, we could have something like that. Um, and when we need to get a contact, we you know, find it by ID and, and so forth. Okay, so that's the um, that's the the way we're going to change the models, and you know there is some other stuff we have to do. Um, we have to have a uh, changes to our application um, cont file um, to um, you know to to specify the MySQL database, and um, and then we're going to be Actually, at times when we um, go to the cloud, we'll be looking in our evolutions file to discover the table structure that the eBean Object Relational Manager has created for us, and we'll take that table structure and and we'll um, use our MySQL client. This time, connecting it to the database, the MySQL instance that's running in the cloud, and to find these tables there. Okay, so that's a um, you know, kind of a quick overview of what's going on with um, with this model. Mod, excuse me, with this module. Let me go actually back uh, okay, here. So we've got this first assignment, which is just to kind of basically go through the play example MySQL system and implement it. And then we have the second assignment, which is the model implementation um, wads. The first one is to implement the digits, update the digits application to support MySQL locally. And I give you kind of a recipe for how to do that. And as you can see, our X time is 60 minutes, so it's it's not you know a, a real quick thing to do. And then the second uh, wad is to uh, take this digits application that you created and upload it to the cloud. And I go through that. Um, that as well. And that's a little simpler. That takes only only about 30 minutes to do. Um, all right, so there you have it. Model implementation. The good news is that, um, you know, it's kind of all downhill from here. Once you get this going, um, you're, you know, and, and as you get more experience at it, I think you'll find that, you know, okay, it took an hour to do that, but, um, you know, at the end of the day, that's that's not a lot of time for the complexity and the, uh, the amount of actual um, capability that you're adding to your application. So it's an hour very well invested um, in, in the process. Okay, so good luck with this. Um, start early and uh, you know, I think you'll, you'll feel um, you know, really proud of what you've, what you've learned at the end of this module.